In the 20th century, terror was used by all manner of groups who failed to come to power through public support. At this very moment, the United Nations is keeping the peace in 16 countries, often in partnership with regional organizations like NATO, the OAS, ASEAN, and ECOWAS. When the tension diminishes, so will our presence. For us to pull back from the world's troubled spots, to turn our backs on those taking risks for peace, to weaken our own opposition to terrorism, would hand the enemies of peace a victory they must never have. For 40 years, the United States has made it clear its vital interest in the security of the Persian Gulf and the countries that border it. The oil reserves there are of strategic importance to the economies of the free world. We're committed to maintaining the free flow of this oil and to preventing the domination of the region by any hostile power. This threat cannot be ignored. This threat cannot be appeased. America will remain engaged in the region and we are prepared to engage in that effort through gun-wielding proxies. Intervention by other nations in their internal affairs would deny them that right and create a focus of conflict. Twelve years ago, the United States invaded Iraq without provocation. And the regime's forces were poised to continue their march to seize other countries. America had acted unilaterally, without regard for the interests of others. And this has fed an almost reflexive anti-Americanism. What we are doing and what we must yet do to combat terror. That no nation will put into orbit or station in outer space weapons of mass destruction. In the decades ahead, the United Nations and other multilateral organizations must continually confront terror. The terrorist group known as ISIL must be degraded and ultimately destroyed. This group has terrorized all who they come across in Iraq and Syria. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat. What could be more alien to the universal aspirations of our peoples than war and the threat of war? The United Nations must play a leading role in this effort. There can be no reasoning no negotiation with this brand of evil. The only language understood by killers like this is the language of force. So the United States of America will work with a broad coalition to dismantle this network of death. And we've shown that the UN can count on the collective strength of the international community. We've shown that the UN can rise to the challenge of aggression just as its founders hope that it would. The United Nations has recently mounted a large-scale effort to provide that new republic with help. Nowhere is this more necessary than Syria. Together with our partners, America is training and equipping the Syrian opposition to be a counterweight to the terrorists of ISIL and the brutality of the Assad regime. A cycle of conflict. Many governments are taking these obligations seriously and my country appreciates it. The fight will not be easy, but every nation will be strengthened in joining it. A coalition against terror. And already over 40 nations have offered to join this coalition. Of terrorist assets. Without any corresponding increase in our security. We know that real democracy depends on the phony democratization designed to mask the perpetuation of dictatorship. That regime and the terrorists who support it are now virtually indistinguishable. There is no us and them, there is only us. In this world, there are good causes and bad causes. And we may disagree on where that line is drawn. We will stand by our friends on the front lines as we and many nations will do in pledging support for the Pakistani people tomorrow. He is just a murderer. Time is passing. The only dividing line is between those who practice, support, or tolerate terror and those who understand that it is murder, plain and simple. We must unite in opposing 
all terrorists, not just some of them. Consider the course that we're on if we fail to confront the status quo. Consider the course that we're on if we fail to confront the status quo. Do unto thy neighbor as you would have done unto yourself.